Dear students, Assalamu alaikum. Today I shall take a class about cell division. This class is for class 9 students from biology book chapter 3. It starts from page 48. I shall take three classes to cover this chapter. At the end of this chapter, we shall be able to understand the concept of cell division, types of cell division. We shall be able to understand the stages of mitosis and significance of mitosis as well. We shall understand meiosis, role of meiosis and as a, as a whole, role of cell division in maintenance of the continuity of life. Some of my slides are not in the book and you will not have to study this for your exam. But this is for relating the subject with uh, core biological idea. This slide shows here the five kingdom classification of living organism. We can see the five kingdoms here, Prokaryote, Protoctista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. We see the term super kingdom here, that means the Eukaryote, um, which includes these four kingdoms and Prokaryote itself or Monera, this is another kingdom which is for single cell bacteria or cyanobacteria. Protoctista includes unicellular protozoa, some algae, fungus as well. Fungi, they are heterotrophic, that means they don't use carbon, carbon dioxide, air carbon dioxide as their body carbon source. They are a big, big group. There are many classes in fungi. I think that this classification and different groups of microorganism or plant or animal you will study in other chapters. Plants are autotrophic, that means they use air carbon dioxide as their body carbon source. Animal, they are heterotrophic, that means they are not primary producer, they are always consumer. Another interesting group here, viruses like COVID-19, which are not cellular, that means they don't have any cell structure, cellular structure. Uh, some people think they are not even living. Some people think they are non-living. But actually, they, most of the people they think they consider viruses as living because they can replicate. And our chapter, this chapter, we shall study here cell division, how cells divide, why do they divide like that. Um, for viruses, what I can tell you that their replication process is far more complex and interesting than these cellular organisms. Algae and fungi, they can reproduce asexually and sexually. Vegetative replication or reproduction is a group, subgroup belongs to asexual reproduction. Bryophytes, that means the moss like plants and pteridophyte that means farm type plants they may reproduce both sexually and asexually what about plants most of the plants they have the or many plants they have the ability to reproduce both asexually and sexually uh, most of the animals they reproduce sexually few animals they can um, they can avoid sexual uh, procedure Suppose, for example, one ant species, Mycoseparus, uh, they can uh, uh, reproduce entirely by asexual means. Reproduction. Reproduction is very much important for any kind of living organism because they create by this procedure new organisms, which is known as offsprings, they are created. So, Reproduction is for propagation of the species. That means the number will increase. But sexual reproduction is very much um, evolved, more advanced 
because they introduce different genetic combination which is not exactly like their parents. So offspring is genetically different than their parents. So that's why this is advanced, more advanced. In this slide, we can see this is interesting mammal, platypus. Um, you know the mammals, uh, they usually give birth of uh, youngs, but this platypus, uh, they lay eggs. So this mother, platypus mother, she is holding affectionately her two youngs. I mean, the, she laid eggs, then the eggs hatched into youngs. This is a dinosaur egg, very big, and um, this is a chicken egg. Okay, so I was talking about asexual reproduction previously. They can be like fission, which is very much common for bacteria. That means same cell, one cell will be divided into two equal, same kind of cell. And I would say this is like photocopy machine. That means no change, usually no change. And then comes the fungus or fungi in plural. They reproduce by uh, asexual means and uh, there are different kind of spores like sporangiospores, conidiospores, chlamydiospores, like asexual spores, many kind they produce. Some single celled fungi like yeast, they can replicate by budding as well. But this slide, this picture, you don't have to learn for your exam. Well, vegetative reproduction, they belong to asexual mode of reproduction. Uh, often we see that um, uh, banana, potato, onion plants, they replicate by vegetative means. Uh, suppose this is uh, many plants, potato or dahlia, this kind of plants, we see that tuber, solen root, uh, that can grow into new plants. And this is one interesting plant which is called, in Bengali it is called Pathor Kuchi. I'm, I'm sure you have seen it somewhere. Uh, in English this is called Mother of Thousands. You see the plantlets here, plantlet, like you know drop is a small but droplet is a smaller than drop. Like that, this is a small plant so it is called plantlet, plantlets. So they line, align the leaves and uh, when they are detached, each of these plantlets will grow into uh, complete plants. So this is about vegetative reproduction. Uh, by using this um, natural means, sometimes we uh, use it for artificial, artificially we use it for commercial purpose like cutting. Asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction, uh, what is the main difference? The major difference is for sexual reproduction, two individuals of the same species, usually a male and a female is necessary. But for asexual reproduction, reproduction occurs without the involvement of another individual very common in single cell organisms and in many plants as well which i talked about previously example for asexual production reproduction fission budding fragmentation sporulation or vegetative reproduction for sexual reproduction we see a special kind of cells male and female gametes or reproductive cells or sex cells they come together for fertilization and after fertilization, the new cell produced is called zygote, which then divide by mitosis and goes on, the mitosis goes on and they become the new organism, mature organism, the offspring. Well, interestingly, not all sexual reproduction involve mating. There are exceptions like salamander, like whiptail lizard and we see that uh, this is sexual reproduction but this is called virgin birth mother provides both sets of dna necessary to create an embryo which is typically female because you know that female composite com chromosome composition is xx 
not xy like male so from the female because it is coming from mothers only so the offsprings are all female offspring not male offspring so there is a chart here we can see the differences between sexual and asexual reproduction uh, which we have discussed in my uh, previous slide zygote formed zygote not formed fertilization needed fertilization not needed interesting point through sexual reproduction new characters are formed in offspring uh, well in asexual production new characters uh, uh, formation rate is very low if you compare with sexual production here new character only be created by mutation uh, sexual in sexual reproduction meiosis is there but in asexual production uh, we don't see meiosis like that sexual reproduction is found in higher animals and asexual production reproduction found in lower animals plants fungi we saw bacteria like other kingdoms uh, or groups of uh, living organisms Sexual reproduction play a major role in evolution process, that means development. And asexual reproduction, they support evolution little bit. Another interesting point, for sexual reproduction, longer time is needed. For example, like several months. But for asexual reproduction, very short period of time is needed uh, to produce another living organism like offspring. Mitosis. Living organisms are constantly making new cells. Why do they make new cells? Because in living organism, always some cells are dying. So you have to replace the dead cells. So cell division is occurring all the time in our body and in plant body or in many places. For example, in human body, 2 trillion cell division occurs every day oh my god trillion which means a million million and for your kind information average human body contains approximately 37.2 trillion cells i was talking about why cells divide by mitosis three important answer one is to make the organism larger that means after the formation of zygote, which is very much small, microscopic, there are lots and lots of mitosis happens so that the zygote grows into a complete organism. Always when the body is formed, some cells are damaged. So we have to repair those damaged cells and Cells are like living organism, they, they are born, they die, so the body needs to replace the dead cells. So mitosis is always necessary. We can see a picture of a big, big, very big dinosaur and a fully grown plant from uh, seed. Fertilization and mitosis. Here we see a nice picture of sperm and egg. Both of them are haploid. That means the chromosome set. One set of chromosome is present there. The original organism was deployed. By meiosis, these reproductive gametes are produced. And the zygote, zygote is deployed again because n plus n equal to twice n. So, so the sperm comes from father and the egg comes from mother. Interestingly, here we can see two flagella. This is for uh, most kind of plants. We see there are sperms with double flagella. But for human sperm, uh, there is only one flagella. Mitosis. Mitosis has generally two parts karyokinesis and cytokinesis. Karyokinesis means division of the nucleus and cytokinesis that means after karyokinesis for animal cells there is a cleavage furrow 
uh, usually almost at the middle of the cell so that two uh, two uh, new cells are produced from the parent cell and for plant cells almost at the middle there is a cell plate is formed and the parent cell is divided into two, two new cells mitosis usually we see for diploid cells but there is exception for example for male honeybee drone bee which is developed from haploid unfertilized egg they replicate their body is formed uh, through mitosis of haploid cells so meiosis actually is cell division which is necessary for producing gametes or sex cells or reproductive cells so for new offspring mother gives half of her chromosome and the father gives half of his chromosome so n plus n equal to the offspring which is diploid twice n if it didn't happen like this if the mother gave complete set of chromosome that means twice n and the father gave complete set of chromosome that means again twice n then the offspring would be 4n so twice as many chromosomes as its parents no nature cannot allow that that's why before fertilization the reproductive cells are produced which are haploid or contain one set of chromosome which is expressed as n this is a flower and uh, this flower has like many flowers have this flower has both female part and male part female part we can see it is called gynoecium stigma style uh, ovary and inside the ovary the egg that means the ovule and this is the stigma at the top and male reproductive part we can see the which is called a stamen stamen this is the sorry this is the anther and this is the filament now the question is where meiosis is happening obviously in anther because the whole flower like the whole plant body it is diploid so there is meiosis there would meiosis happen and the uh, male reproductive cells haploid reproductive cells will be present here which will fertilize the uh, haploid ovule present inside the ovary many flowers uh, they are not um, uh, they don't contain both male part and female part like this plant there are some flowers which are female flowers are separate male flowers are separate uh, so whatever the situation is uh, fertilization is needed for the production of zygote if we look at the life cycle of any angiosperm plant you know the meaning of angiosperm that means the seed is inside flesh or dry body it is not open it is covered but for gym, uh, gymnosperm the seeds are open they are not covered so gym, uh, gymnosperm or angiosperm if we consider the life cycle of developed plants we see that meiosis uh, which is explained in my previous slide after meiosis the zygote is produced here um, and this zygote they will divide by mitosis and develop into embryo and lots of lots of mitosis divisions will be uh, happened and a full plant will be there and we shall see the uh, flower will be there uh, fertilization will be there again and the flower fruit will contain the seed and those seeds which will which are diploid they will grow into um, plants if we look at animals for example human body uh, what is happening there father and mother both of they are diploid their whole body is diploid containing two sets of chromosomes twice n but for father inside the testis meiosis happens always and um, 
uh, after meiosis the testis contains millions of sperms and mother body it uh, it contains ovary and inside the ovary meiosis happens and egg cell is produced so after the fertilization of egg and the sperm the diploid zygote is there and after the formation of zygote there will be many many cycles of mitosis division and at the end of the day the adult offspring male or female will be there so um, through these slides i have tried to show you that uh, living organisms there are many many varieties and cell division is needed for all the cellular organisms virus is acellular it doesn't have cell but it replicate its replication uh, method is dif different that's why they don't have the they are not cell so their method is different so i didn't include it here but all the cellular organisms from unicellular bacteria to most advanced homo sapiens or human being all need cell division and reproduction for reproduction and reproduction asexual or sexual whatever the method is they contain they need cell division cells need to be divided always so we have seen that different groups of living organisms like uh, bacteria fungi algae protozoa plants moss farm animals lower animals higher animals all need to divide so actually i try to explain the importance of cell division or the link of cell division in different groups different kind of cell division i try to explain in my next class i shall try to teach you mitosis thank you very much but before completing i i want to show you a very nice picture most of us think that in nature animals i mean if we consider the higher animals only the females get pregnant but for seahorse after mating female seahorse deposits up to 1500 eggs inside the male's pouch and the male seahorse carries the eggs for 9 to 45 days until the baby seahorses are ready inside the pouch they are fully developed but very much miniature small so then the youngs are released into the water so this is a pregnant father seahorse and this is a pregnant father seahorse giving birth of baby seahorses thank you very much